This is Rick Matson from the University of Washington Shoulder and Elbow Service. Let's talk a little bit about the normal shoulder, what you should know. Here are the parts of the normal shoulder. Here we have the humeral head, which is the ball of the ball and socket joint. It's surrounded by the insertion of the muscles of the rotator cuff in back and in front. And splitting the muscles of the rotator cuff, we have the long head of the biceps tendon. This is a view of the socket of the ball and socket joint. We call this the glenoid. The glenoid is deepened by the glenoid labrum or lips that go around the edges of the socket. The biceps tendon, as we saw before, runs across the top of the joint. And here we have some of the important ligaments that stabilize the shoulder in extreme positions of motion. The muscles around the shoulder are, most importantly, the deltoid muscle and the muscles of the rotator cuff. The muscles of the rotator cuff include the supraspinatus on top, the subscapularis in front, and the infraspinatus behind. These muscles press the ball or the humeral head into the socket or the glenoid. And this stability, which we call concavity compression, helps resist the upward directed forces of the deltoid muscle. When we evaluate the arthritic shoulder, we check the patient reported function, the range of motion of the shoulder, the strength of the shoulder, and we look at plain x-rays. This is a checklist of the important shoulder activities. We ask each of our patients to indicate whether they can or cannot perform each of these 12 functions. And based on their responses, we get a pretty good idea about how much the shoulder is bothering them and what functions they are unable to perform. We next examine the shoulder and we look to see how stiff it is because stiffness is one of the most important symptoms and function limiting factors in shoulder arthritis. Here we have a demonstration of normal forward elevation and limited forward elevation. Here we have an example of normal cross body adduction and limited cross body adduction. And here we have an example of normal external rotation and limited external rotation. And here, with the patient lying on their back, we have normal internal rotation with the arm out to the side and limited internal rotation with the arm abducted. We also like to check for the strength of the shoulder, and we do this with isometric testing. That means that we have the patient press against a fixed resistance, usually the hand of the examiner, and here the patient is pushing upward, and this checks for the function of the supraspinatus muscle, which is in this location. Here we have the patient pressing outward, and that checks for the function of the uh, muscles of the uh, external rotator muscles, including the infraspinatus. And here we have internal rotation checked by having the patient force the arm against the stomach, again, against the resistance of the examiner. Plain x-rays are usually sufficient to uh, understand the anatomy of the arthritic shoulder. We use three views. The first is what we call an AP in the plane of the scapula. So here you can see the shoulder blade is flat against the x-ray cassette, and the beam passes perpendicular to it with the arm in about 30 degrees of external rotation. This gives us a nice projection through the joint, as shown here. In this uh, illustration of an arthritic joint, you can see the irregular joint surface, and you can see also a big bone spur down here at the bottom of the joint. In the axillary view, which is taken with the arm away from the side and elevated in the plane of the scapula here, we can see the anatomy in a different projection. And in this particular example, we see that the back of the socket has been worn away and the ball is slipping to the back of the joint rather than being centered in the glenoid socket as it should be normally. Finally, on the right-hand side, we see a what we call a templating view, which we use for trying to understand the size of the implant that might be used 
should this shoulder come to shoulder reconstruction. We use a calibrated marker as shown here to show the dimensions of the arm bone shown here. So thanks for listening. Uh, if you'd like more information, I'd advise you to click here at the Shoulder Arthritis blog. Thanks for your attention.